In this video I'm going to show how to make a dual boot encrypted install on an OEM device where Windows is pre-installed. For example you get your laptop and you want to install also an encrypted Linux distribution next to your Windows that comes with the laptop. So first of all we will need to shrink the partition like what Windows lives on. So we need to do this from Windows so from start menu you start writing format and then the disk or partition manager tool of Windows pops up and all you need to do is right click the Windows partition and uh, select shrink. So usually you come with a it comes with a UEFI partition and the recovery partition and then you have the Windows partition. And you just need to select the size how much you want to shrink. I think like leaving 150, 160 gigabytes for the Windows install should be sufficient. I never ran out of space like that having a couple of games or some heavier IDEs. And then you will have uh, the remaining space here in this example 315 gigabytes like unallocated and we will deal with that from the Linux live disk. So like when you boot it up your live disk, in this case, like it's a Linux Mint, you can start gparted. And you can see the partition layout we have seen previously on Windows, and you can see the unallocated place, the recovery partition. And we will want to have two partitions in this unallocated place. First of all, like we want a boot partition, which won't be encrypted. So this will manage like the encrypted partition and everything. And this needs to be only like one or two gigabytes. Nothing crazy about that. So this is the unencrypted boot partition and to find it later you, it's quite handy to make a label or partition name for it. And then the next partition we are going to add will be simply like some unallocated or unformatted like uh, area. So we actually make a partition and leave it unformatted because we are going to use the terminal to actually deal with the details of that partition and the standard like crypt setup tools. So leave it unformatted and well, select whatever you want. You can leave some for SSD provisioning, but I think for modern SSDs, like you are pretty fine like this. So you double check everything and then you can apply all the operations and you can, you can then see in the logs, like what the actual partitions were named. So like we will need this partition pass, this slash dev slash mvme 0 n one p 6 So for example, if you have a SATA device, this is slash dev slash SDA, I don't know, three, four, whatever comes to that. So like first of all, like we now have an unformatted partition. First of all, we need to format it. So we will format it like as an encrypted like standard Linux container or looks like crypt partition. So sudo crypt setup looks format and then you have the actual path what you see above from gparted log. So this will be now the partition 6 on this NVMe SSD. Yes. So this will have this whole like area of the SSD like 
encrypted yes so you should enter a passphrase here um, well obviously like you should use a long enough and difficult enough password and you can also like do this with a key file if you if safety is first of all this is just a no-brainer version just having a passphrase there which you will need to type in at logon yes so then you then we can open this container or partition or encryption layer uh, what we have just created so we need to name it something so here i have named named it crypt mint uh, you can name it however but you just need to be consistent then later on when you create your uh, volumes on it so here we throw in the passphrase we just created previously so now we this crypt mint should show up like when we check like the slash dev slash mapper folder of ours also our virtual partitions will pop up there okay then we create a physical volume like on this yeah, slash dev slash mapper slash crypt mint and then we create a volume group also on this on this one single physical volume so this we call the vg mint like volume group mint and we will create our logical volumes on this one so first of all we create the swap so if we for some reason we run out of memory like then the system doesn't crash completely but has some minimal overhead this isn't the best treatment for an ssd so i have just left two gigabytes there but you can leave as well the same amount as amount of ram you have that's maybe a safe choice but a bit of waste then you can create the root partition where most of our installed programs will be and uh, this i think 60 70 gigabytes should be pretty decent for that and for the remaining space you can create a logical volume for your home folder so slash home will it will be mounted on and i just used here like all the all the free space remaining on this volume group so now we have the three logical like partitions or logical volumes on this encrypted disk so let's start making the file system so for for the swap partition we just sudo mkswap and uh, as you see like we have uh, the volume group name dash the logical volume name so we have them in uh, slash dev slash mapper like with this name so this is how you refer to these partitions now so next we will create an x4 partition for the root so this will be vg mint lv root and this is, will take like a few seconds and there we are so the next is to check like how much space is reserved for like system processes so if you would run out of space then the system can still run or it won't crash immediately so it has some extra space so we have like um, over 800,000 blocks reserved for this which on today's uh, disk sizes it's quite overkill so I'm reducing this uh, default 5% reserved space for the system or root user like the 1% with the tune to fs m1 as one percent so as you see now now we have like only fifth of the blocks reserved so the next step will be to repeat this uh, on the home folder i am 
making a separate home folder because full system reinstalls will be like much much easier like that that you can leave your home folder of course with a backup but you just format the root and push your new system there so now we have made the file system on the home partition and well here we have even less of a reason to have reserved space for system processes so i will leave this to 0 0.1 percent of the logical volume that's right so we have like third of the blocks then on our root partition but this should be fine in case of some accidents but i don't think we really need more so now we can check on what we have done uh, so sudo lv display is the comment here and we see our three logical volumes and after this we can just proceed to installing ubuntu or in this case linux mint so we have the swap partition the root partition 64 gigs and then the remaining space for the home partition where all the user files will be hanging all righty yes so let's start the installer i'm skipping here a few parts in this video but the most important thing is that when it comes to the disk or boot manager or whatever like it shows up you always want something else you want to see like what is installed where and you want to control it so like here you can see like these um, volumes which I which are on the slash dev slash mapper so you see like the those mapped volumes and you also see like the real like physical partitions on the SSD so first of all like we have our home which we will use x4 file system for and well we can or cannot partition or, or format it and this will be mounted on slash home then we have the root partition it will be simply mounted on slash also will stay x4 that's right we can double check the swap partition like it should be like pre-populated like it recognized that it's swap area and then we need to find our physical like partition like x4 partition which is actually like where we want our boot folder to be mounted so this will this will be mounted to slash boot so you should like check out a little bit like where these partitions are so not the reserved recovery partition but actually like it will be now this p p5 and this will be used as x4 or you can also use x2 x3 for the boot partition it doesn't matter much if it's a journaling file system but you should definitely mount it to slash boot and all the tools to deal with the encrypted like our main volume like will be lying on that boot partition so what uh, is left here is that you want to install the bootloader on the main device so this would be like sda or sdb for a sata disk or nvme nvme 0 n1 or n2 or nvme 1 n1 and so on like for the actual physical device your disk that's where you want to boot from and then you can proceed with installation you should double check like that just because there can be quite fatal mistakes at this point but the most important here is that you actually continue testing so you don't restart the computer here but continue testing in case you would restart the computer actually will not boot so this is exclamation mark you want to continue testing that's right so what we need to do now like we select a folder of our choice uh, 
and mount like our partitions there on this live system but we will need like a few like additional things here so first of all like we want to know like which partition our boot is on so like there is this partition label boot which we gave like when we created it so that's handy so it will be this nvme 0 n one p5 and then we also want the uuid of the of the encrypted partition so not of the partition itself but actually like the not the encrypted container but the partition itself we want the id of that because we will need to tell the system that that's an encrypted volume and it should be handled accordingly so now it's time to actually move mount our like uh, logical volumes so like the root partition we just mount to slash mnt or your folder of choice and then the home to your folder of choice slash home and uh, then we mount also the boot partition so here we actually need to give the device we checked previously so this will be partition 5 in this case that will be slash mnt slash boot yes and now we can actually ch root after we have also mounted bind mounted the devices so that we can like uh, deal with the initram file system like as seeing the same devices as now the live system sees okay so after we have um, ch rooted into slash mnt like we need to this is pretty standard procedure if you have ever done this then there's nothing new if not then you can just copy paste what you need to mount so you need to mount the proce processes the this folder and the dev pts folder and that's where you that's when you will kind of within this ch rooted or this rooted system you can like see as if you would have the devices that later this computer will actually have so what you need to do now is create this uh, slash etc slash cryptop file and uh, well with the text editor of your choice like uh, yeah just edit this file now i had this all already written here but practically you need to change this id of your encrypted partition that's the most important like the you will have no key file this time and uh, that means that it will ask for a password on boot the target name is what you chose previously otherwise it will get confused with the logical volumes and uh, well the options you can throw in that it's a lux partition so linux and linux encrypted like partition and before booting or rebooting you definitely need to like rebuild your initramp file system so for all, all the kernels available like when you install it like there will be only one kernel maybe if you installed updates during the during the installation process then you might have a couple of but this is what you need to actually refresh like the initialization and that's that you reboot and then you can choose which system which operating system you boot to